No sooner was the Book of Mormon off Grandin's Press in Palmyra, New York, than the prophet Joseph Smith was reassigned. The project is little known and even less understood even by Joseph's own people. Yet it was so critical of a work that Joseph devoted much of his time to it for the next two years, 1830, 31, 32, and a little bit into 33. The endeavor was launched as a commandment from the Almighty himself and shepherded by the Almighty to its completion. Joseph would call this work a, quote, branch of his calling. It was known and prophesied millennia before that Joseph would do this great work. Moses himself actually looked forward to it. It was an integral component of the restoration. So much of Joseph's doctrine that would come through him came because of this work. The contribution of this one project to the corpus of Latter-day Saint theology and revelation is incalculable, not to mention how much it contributed to the personal education and edification of Joseph Smith himself. Now, today, we have the results of that project. We hold it in our hands, we have it on our phones, we pack it off to church and seldom mention or appreciate what we have. What is this great thing? the Joseph Smith translation of the Bible. Now, as to what the JST is and its attendant power, the Lord himself told Joseph at the outset, quote, the scriptures, meaning the Bible, shall be given even as they are in mine own bosom to the salvation of mine own elect. Doctrine and Covenants 3520. So how did it come to be that the Bible would be given as it was in the Lord's own bosom? Well, according to witnesses, a scribe sat waiting at the table with paper, pen, and ink. Joseph sat down with the large family Bible purchased from E.B. Grandin and began to read under the influence of the Holy Ghost. As he read the Holy Bible without the aid of seer stones, Urman Thummim, or any other device, his mind was opened and his spirit was enlightened. As he passed through reading the text, he dictated changes. Now, sometimes there were no changes. Sometimes the changes were as minor as correcting punctuation, spelling, or grammar. Other times, there were little inconsequential deletions But most impressively, sometimes there were whole chapters dealing with intricate narratives of doctrine and history revealed to Joseph, such as the writings of Enoch, Joseph of Egypt, and more about Moses. Joseph would, from the fountain of his expanded mind, dictate these new passages to ascribe word for word at a pace slow enough to be written down in longhand by his scribe, and all of that without ever losing his train of thought, having to start over, gather up his creativity, or attune himself. Somehow, just the process of revealing the Bible through Joseph, as described by witnesses, that itself is miraculous, considering the material that was revealed. But the miracle becomes even more astonishing when the work is carefully studied, pondered, and compared to the present Bible. How in the world could a 24-year-old uneducated farmer from the frontier have produced such a miraculous work? The JST is inconceivable. Considering its origins, The Joseph Smith translation of the Bible is just like the Book of Mormon. It is a tangible miracle to be held in the hand, testifying that Joseph Smith was an instrument in the hands of Almighty God. Now, I know that many have opined over the years that Joseph never finished the Joseph Smith translation or that its text had been adulterated by others in the years that followed after he died. 
but both ideas have been proven to be false. That manuscript, which we now have, is reliable. It is precious. Now, not only is the JST a testimony of Joseph as a prophet, but perhaps its greatest contribution is its witness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And oh, what a witness it is. The JST reveals a greater Christ, more noble, more divine, more compassionate, making then the Joseph Smith translation of the Bible another testament of Jesus Christ and the most correct of any Bible on earth. Thank the Lord. That manuscript is now ours. <laughs>